welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Quartz 64 Model A single board computer from, as you can probably guess, Pine 64. And the Quartz 64 Model A is a very interesting ARM based SPC, it sells for about $60, and it's got a PCIe slot and a SATA port. So, Let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our new single board computer, so let's get it out of the box. It says Open Sesame down here, so uh, obviously wants to come out. And uh, here we are, very simple unboxing. Even for me, it's just in a nice simple bag. And uh, here we have the Quartz 64 Model A. And as we can see, it's labelled 4G, which means this is a 4 gigabyte version of the Quartz 64 Model A. And as I said in the introduction, this sells for $60 or technically $59.99. However, there's also an 8 gigabyte version of this board that sells for $79.99. And there's a Quartz 64 Model B, which also has 4 gigabytes of RAM and also sells for $59.99. And if you're wondering about the differences, here on the Model A, we have got our SATA port, we've got a PCIe slot, but we don't have onboard Wi-Fi. Whereas the Quartz 64 Model B does not have the SATA port, it doesn't have PCIe, but it does have an M.2 slot, and it does have onboard Wi-Fi. And personally, I think this makes the Model A the far more interesting board, which is why we're looking at it here in this video. The other difference of note is that the Model B has got a Raspberry Pi form factor, so the Model B is about this size, whereas the Model A, as we can see here, is a much larger, and this has actually got the same form factor as this board over here, which is a Rock Pro 64, a classic single board computer from Pine 64, and very similar in layout as we can see to the Quartz 64 Model A. Both boards have got the PCIe slot in the same position, although we don't have the SATA port on the Rock Pro 64. And very much the Quartz 64 Model A is the successor of the upgrade to the Rock Pro 64. When I tested out this board on the channel about three years ago, I fitted it with a PCIe SATA card from Pine, which I put into a homemade bracket, as you can see. And my plan in this video is to use exactly the same bracket and the same SATA PCIe card with the Quartz 64 Model A to see how they work on this board. As we can see, our Rock Pro 64 is fitted with a heatsink, and I purchased exactly the same one for the Quartz 64, comes with this rather wacky heat pad down here. And I've also purchased a 16 gigabyte EMMC flash module, which we're going to load our operating systems on, although you can also boot the board from a micro SD card. Finally, before we go through this board's specification, it's worth noting that I've had this Quartz 64 Model A for some time, as it actually came out in June 2021. However, at launch, there was a strong warning that software for the Quartz 64 is still in early development, and so I've waited a year for things to improve, which I think is ample time for an SBC to become established. Right, at the heart of this board, the system on a chip is a Rock chip RK3566, which contains four ARM Cortex A55 cores running at up to 2 GHz, along with an ARM Mali G52 MP2 GPU. As already noted, this Quartz 64 has got 4 GB of low power DDR4 RAM, we can see it down here, and fairly obviously it's got a lot of connectivity. Starting on the first short edge, we find a 3.5mm audio jack, power and reset switches, and then three USB 2 ports and one USB 3 port. If we change the angle, we can see that behind the USB 3 port, we've got the SATA connector. And it's important to note that these two ports share the same I.O. lines, which means you cannot use the USB 3 port and the SATA port at the same time. Also here we've got a connector for our EMMC flash module, and on the other side we've got a fan connector, a speaker connector, and a connector for running the board from a lithium battery. 
Then finally, we've got two headers onto which you can plug an optional wireless module to give the board Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Spinning 90 to the other end, we find a full-size HDMI connector that supports 4K output, and next to that, gigabit ethernet. And then on the other end, we've got a barrel jack for power. I do like a barrel jack for power, and this requires a 12 volt, three amp adapter. Again, if we cut to a higher angle, we see many additional connectors, including this, which is a power connector for a SATA drive. So we can power a SATA drive from the board. And then we've also got five ribbon cable connectors, as you can see. Running through these, the first one here is a DSi connector, a display serial interface connector for connecting an LCD panel. And it can be a touch panel because we've also got a TP, a touch panel connector. Behind them, we then got an EDP connector, which stands for embedded display port. So another means of attaching a display. And then over here, the smaller connector is a CSI connector, a camera serial interface connector for connecting a camera. And the final ribbon cable connector, this long connector here, is an ES-103TC1, which, as you may know, is for attaching an e-ink display. Oh, and next to it, down here, we've got a tiny recovery button. If we return to a shot of the whole board, we can see that on one long edge, we have got a 20-pin GPIO connector, and hanging out in the middle of the other long edge, we have our new friend, our PCIe slot. And this is an open-ended four times slot, so in theory it can take all manner of cards. However, I cannot find out the PCIe generation. However, the Pine64 wiki for the Quartz64 does note that the PCIe implementation on the RK3566 is much more compatible with a wider range of devices compared to the one on the RK3399 used on the Rock Pro 64. So it'll be interesting to see what we can get working with this PCIe slot. So I think the only key feature I've not shown you of this board is one we find underneath. If we turn it over, we see up here we've got a micro SD card slot, which we can boot the board from if we're not using EMMC. But uh, other than that, the base of this board isn't going to win any interesting things competitions. So let's get the board turned over back the right way up like that. And I think it's now high time to get this board running a Linux distro. Greetings, here I am back again, and I've now got everything up and running with the heatsink fitted, the EMMC module fitted, and on the EMMC module, I've installed Manjaro with a Mate desktop. And if we go over to that desktop, here we are, I've run up both the Mate system monitor and HTOP so we can have an idea what is going on, how things are performing, and things are doing okay. I've been testing out this board for some time, it does seem nice and stable, but uh, there are certainly lags here when it comes to graphical performance. I don't think we've got GPU support, but try and move this monitor window like that. As you can see, it, uh, it's not ideal, is it? Oh, look, that, that's clearly got some, uh, some graphical issues, but uh, I'll just do this one as well. You can see this is, it's not a computer you're going to be using for a lot of desktop work, but I did want to try and uh, run up a desktop to see how it would function. And again, if I look at the application menu, you'll see again it, it lags a little bit. There's not a lot here. This is very much a development image. There's a few things around, but uh, again, as I said, there's a bit of, of a lag in the system. But uh, let's go across to the internet. Let's go to Firefox, which I've set to go to the wiki page for the Quartz 64. And uh, we'll do this in real time. We'll let the thing get there. Come on, computer, you can do it. There it is, making an attempt to uh, go to the website. It'll get there in a second. We'll just give it a little bit of help. Come on, you can get there. There we are, look. We're now on the Quartz 64 page on the, the wiki on the Pine 64 website. And uh, there, look, we've got pictures of the Quartz 64 Model B, the one that's the same size as a Raspberry Pi, but doesn't have the SATA port or the PCIe slot. And the reason I've come here is to show you the software that's available. And we've still got the message that says software is in very early development for this board. And as you can see, here's Manjaro. I've installed Manjaro with a desktop and there's various options available. And there's also various other bits of software you can try and install if you wish, which are listed here, as you can see. And it's worth noting that for Manjaro with a desktop, if we just click here for the images I've been using, the ones for the Model A, 
when we get across to GitHub, here we are, you'll see everything is labeled as pre-release. We are still clearly in very early days when it comes to software here on the Quartz 64. So I'm not going to focus too much on that. I'm certainly not going to try and play YouTube here, for example. I know it wouldn't be a good experience. I'm much more interested in the hardware for the Quartz 64, in particular its SATA port and its PCIe slot. And so I'm going to move on to give them a test. Guess what? I've now connected an SSD to the Quartz 64 Model A. Things are a bit messy, I'm afraid, in terms of the wiring, as you can see. But if I give you another angle, you can see where I've plugged in a SATA lead and a power lead to power the SSD. And if we go across to the desktop, here we are. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. If I do an lsblk, a list block devices command here in a terminal, and press enter, you can see we can see our EMMC flash module, we can see some boot flash and a RAM drive, but we can't see the SSD connected via the SATA port. And my current understanding of this is this is probably a kernel support issue. And indeed, if we look to the web page we saw in the last segment of the video, under Manjaro ARM with no desktop, and I'm where I'm running here, Manjaro ARM with a desktop, but uh, under Manjaro ARM with no desktop, it does tell us that Manjaro currently ships with a Linux RC kernel, a release candidate kernel, and this doesn't have, at least at the time of writing these comments here, USB 3, PCIe, and SATA support. So this may well be the issue with, with Manjaro ARM with a desktop environment. This said, before I start getting fundamental and changing kernels, I thought I'd see if the PCIe slot does or doesn't work. So, I've now plugged in a twin SATA port card into the PCIe slot and secured it in the bracket I built when I did this on a Rock Pro 64. And indeed, it's the same card I used on a Rock Pro 64. So if we do have kernel support, there's a good chance that this card will work. And to test things out, I've also connected our SSD to one of the SATA ports on the card. So if we go across to the desktop, here we are, hello desktop. It does work, this is good news. If I type a lsblk here like this, you can see we have a SATA connected SSD connected to the card in the PCIe slot. And on this system, I've installed HD parameters so we can test the speed of the interface. And so I'll just bring up the command that should be in the buffer. There it is, and we just execute like that. Oh, it wants my password for a sudo. There we are, nice simple test password there and we're gonna get the speed. Oh, it's very exciting, what's it gonna be? There we are, 343 megabytes a second. That's not bad for a SATA port on a single board computer. It's significantly below the speed of the SSD, which would be a good 500 megabytes a second, but it's certainly very respectable for a drive connected to a low cost SBC. And whilst we're here, I'm sure some of you are wondering about the speed of the EMMC flash module. So hopefully in the buffer, I've got the test for that as well. There we are, let's execute that. Won't of course be as fast as our SATA connected SSD, but uh, we will see. What's it gonna be? Oh look, 159 megabytes a second. That's pretty respectable for an EMMC flash module. So there we are, we're getting somewhere with the Quartz 64 Model A. In particular, we've got our PCIe slot working with a SATA card. And of course, if you can connect more than one SATA drive to a system, it opens up all kinds of possibilities if you want to build a NAS or a small server. Hello there. Here I am back again, and I've been trying out various things. For a start, I've changed the kernel to what I think is an experimental kernel for the the Quartz 64 Model A, the one that uh, is indicated on the web page we were looking at earlier. And this hasn't made any difference at all as far as I can see in terms of at least of our connectivity. I still can't get the SATA port to work, but the PCIe slot still does work. I've also tried using a different card in the PCIe slot. I've tried using this PCIe to USB 3 card I happen to have lying around, and this didn't work at all. And by didn't work, I don't mean that the card itself didn't work, I mean that the Quartz 64 Model A wouldn't boot at all with this card fitted. The other thing I've done is to try plugging something into the USB 3 port 
on the system. I plugged in our same SSD we've been using previously, connected via a USB to SATA adapter. And uh, that does work if we do an LSBLK here. Our USB 3 port clearly works. However, if we do a speed test, oh, it's very exciting. This is, let's do our speed test like that. You can see we've even mounted the drive this time. Very exciting. Makes no difference to the speed test whether it's mounted or not. But anyway, speed test here, 33.07 megabytes a second. Clearly this is running at USB 2 speeds, not USB 3. So we don't have USB 3 working. Anyway, that's what I've been trying out. It's pretty obvious the software for this board is still very much developmental, which to be fair to Pine64 is exactly what they say on their website. I don't know why, but I really like the Quartz 64. Maybe it's the name, maybe it's the form factor. I like the way you can plug a PCIe card into this board and it makes it feel like a very traditional computer. Certainly it's the kind of board I feel like I'd like to plug in a keyboard like this one and spend hours and hours messing around in a terminal. And certainly I'll follow the development of software for this board with great interest. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Uh -oh.